talk about verbal vitamins. Those unnecessary verbal fillers that we bring to our speech that is absolutely unnecessary. Verbal viruses are things like, ah, uh, um, big one for women is so, like, you know, Verbal viruses don't only have to be words. It could be unnecessary behavior such as a tongue click. Instead of saying, um, oftentimes people will go and then make their statement. Unnecessary. How many of you here are verbal virus people? <laughs> Four stall and one coming down with verbal viruses. All right. Why do you think people use verbal viruses? It's a filler while you're trying to think of what to say. It is a it is a filler to think of what it is that you want to say. But I think it gets wired into habit. A big one is when people are giving a presentation. Uh, so on this slide, right, we hear that a lot. We don't need that. But people do it. So if we look here at the data. It's unnecessary. It happens as filler, as I said earlier, when we are speaking so fast, where I have all these ideas that I want to tell you, I'm speaking faster, I'm probably being a shallow chest breather, and um, 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 and so I don't have my thoughts in sync with my speech mechanism. People who have come to me who have said, oh, I have so much trouble with verbal viruses. When you get really nice intonation down with controlled breathing, where your mind and your speech mechanism and your body are more in sync, that will weed that out. That's very helpful for narrative speech. When you have quite a few things that you want to say, quite a few thoughts, where you need to one, link one thought over to another thought, we tend to get too caught up and we just throw in that verbal virus. Another reason why verbal viruses exist is that we feel like there cannot be any silence. If I'm up here and I have silence, people are going to think I have no idea why I'm here, what I'm supposed to say, or I forgot everything. So instead of having silence, I'm just going to go, uh, so uh, on page 78, we don't need that. Is it okay to have silence? Is it okay to have silence for a second if you're up giving a presentation? Is it okay to have silence for five seconds if you're giving a presentation? Is it okay to have silence for 10 seconds if you're giving a presentation? It's getting awkward. Ah, it's starting to get awkward. That's getting awkward. But really, when it comes to taking a moment to look at a slide, to take a moment to gather a thought, how much time do you really think we're looking at? Two seconds. One or two seconds. It is perfectly appropriate. It is actually considered to be more powerful to have pauses. But those who do not love public speaking, oh, I can't have anything silent. They'll think I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But it's okay. Tomorrow, let's practice as we're doing our, our presentations, our more formal ones. We're going to put together a PowerPoint. Tomorrow, I want you to practice having a natural pause. If you're going to speak about an idea or some data, just put it up here. Take a look at it and say what you want to say. It is absolutely okay to have silence as you gather a thought. Verbal viruses tend to come after questions. Someone asks you a question and you throw in a verbal virus. Why does that happen? So that they think you're answering them faster? Yes, but it's cluttered. It's cluttered. Someone asks a question, uh, yeah, yeah, so, um, and then you give the answer. It's unnecessary. Post a question, take a moment. Yes, NASDAQ is down today because, boom, 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 boom. We don't need, uh, I think there's a lot of controversy over the stock market right now because what's happening in Europe, just, there's some controversy over last night's decision. The markets are down. We're very, very confident that with our planning and our strategy models that we have, that we're going to get your investments turned around. We don't need that verbal virus. Instead of doing a verbal virus, maybe give yourself a little breath. 
but I need you to be comfortable with the idea that the silence isn't poison. We have our nice little cliche, silence is golden, right? It actually makes you look more powerful, more organized, in better control for you to take that small pause and move forward than to fill it with a big loud, uh. So we're good with that? So is a very big virus for women. And I think it's because we just want to be nice. So I need to talk to you about your attendance. I need to talk to you about your attendance. So there's something I need to share with you. There's something I need to share with you. So I called this meeting so we can all, I called this meeting. We don't need these unnecessary viruses in the front of our messages. Most people who have a verbal virus problem tend to have it at the beginning of their statement. Like, um, and then they go on with their statement. It tends to happen at the beginning. That is good because we can control that. We can control that. Where there's more flexibility and it's rare that I have a client who has a lot of verbal viruses in the middle. Usually people put their verbal virus at the beginning because the silence is weird. They want to collect their thoughts or they just feel like they need to fill it with something. Eliminate that behavior and move straight into your message. You will sound cleaner, you will sound more authoritative, you will sound more credible. What happens is that we're in the middle of a narrative and there's a lot of details to the story and there's a lot of facts I need to recall. So maybe in the middle of explaining I might throw in an uh and then I'll go into my next point. That's really not where the verbal virus problem comes from. The verbal virus problem tends to typically come when it's at the top of your statement. So that's easy to control. We can weed that out. If you're doing a lot of verbal viruses in the middle of your thoughts or transition between thoughts, you are probably speaking too fast. So take a nice diaphragm breath, go back to the speech staircase, and you should have better control over that. But if you have a verbal virus problem, you need the cure because it is a locked behavior. One strategy that works very well with my clients, and we're doing that with you, is to get a post-it note. Get a post-it note and do it for each day. So depending how you move around your day, if you have a clipboard, put it on your clipboard. If there's a certain workstation that you have, put today's date, put your post-it note there. And whenever you do a verbal virus, get on over there and tally that post-it note. Don't blow that off. Don't go, oh shoot, I know I have a verbal virus. Boom, walk through and do the action of the tick mark. In order to eliminate this behavior, we need to significantly increase our awareness to the behavior. And each time you do a tally mark, just that follow through really heightens the behavior. That after time, it really starts to shape that behavior away.